So let's talk about the Game Awards, and it's not what you think. A Polygon published an article that just actually blew my mind, and it was titled, Modders Deserve Recognition at the Game Awards. And personally, I'm kind of wondering what world they live in. And as a 16-year game dev in AAA, that makes zero sense. It's not even including the complications of IP rights or infringement, or frankly, when a publisher or a game company doesn't like the mods that are being awarded or pushed to the forefront, then what happens? Well, I'll tell you what happens. The Game Awards already did it, and they got in trouble from the Papa Nintendo. And we're not a Nintendo fan here, but it still begs the question of how can you celebrate modding and also not get into an IP infringement issue? And that's not even including all of the game developers and publishers and writers and everybody else that are looking to make a profit one way or another from the Game Awards. And when you look at it like that as a business, what does modding really bring? Let's dive in this article. It's a crazy read. <laughs> so the Game Awards is already kind of like growing and expanding outside of what it really should be about, which is celebrating game devs. And in reality, let's be honest, is that the game trailers, or, you know, the game, trailer, the game award is really the game trailers. Also, if modders get the spotlight, it makes it easier for big corpus to locate them and go after them with legal action. Most companies actually want modders to fix things because it costs them nothing. It increases the longevity of their game. Okay, I'm going to put it this way. The smart game devs like Rockstar understand that modding helps their game. Modders do do God work, but I don't think modders should be in the game awards. I think it's weird in the game awards that we have a television section now of like IP expansion. Like, no, that's not the game awards. That has nothing to do with games other than it shares an IP. But let's talk about this article. This is such a weird take of like, Oh, we should be included too, but we don't own the IP or the rights or really anything that we're doing. Uh, but we want to be included. It's like, cool. I could see them adding modders just to like appease people because I feel like a lot of people are turning against the Game Awards right now. And they're really starting to see the foundational bias that's been happening. I mean, when you look at the voting jury for the Game Awards... It's um, it's very interesting. It's a lot of the uh, it's a lot of the writers and people that make absolutely <laughs> articles that are trying to politically attack games they dislike. They are effectively trying to gatekeep and say, oh, you know what, this game's good, this game's bad. But the reality is, is that a lot of people just get their news from YouTube now or TikTok. Why the f is LA Times a judge? Uh, money. That's why. Yeah, you got LA Times, you got Pride.com, you got Rolling Stones, and I, I could. I polygon, I get I get Polygon, I get IGN. I don't agree with their writers. I literally got in a fight one blue sky with one of them. NPR. Why the f is NPR here? It gets even worse as you go down. To me, mods represent some of the best work happening in video games. But you don't own it. That's really what yes. it comes down to. It, you're te you're working off someone else's code base and somebody else's assets. It's in a very weird gray area same as what streaming is it's it's in a it's in a very gray area that companies allow it to happen because it is mutually beneficial but does it deserve to be in the game awards no another game show or another game show another award show sure there's very few mods that are actually original yeah most of them just fix bugs or they optimize and i think they do an amazing job and they fix issues that devs can't fix or won't fix or have a low value on a bug but mods continue games they extend games but yeah they're not most of them are not original but i'll say this because these additions uh have allowed me to introduce an anime boys to stardew valley and put margaret thatcher's grave in skyrim but because modding has become a central part of gaming culture and development. But in some cases, these fan-made add-ons can make a gameplay playable or introduce vital quality of life fixes for major AAA titles. But again, like that doesn't deserve an award. Fixing somebody else's work is not like, wow, let me give you a sticker. I'm sorry. Other times a mod can change a game so the romance system and gender markers and character designs options are more inclusive. If you can imagine a change in a game it's possible to mod could bring it to life. Modders who are developers in their own right have worked on games like Stardew Valley 1.6 Update and Starfield, so why don't they get their due at the Game Awards? This person has such a skewed perspective. It's basically give me credit for spit shining the Mona Lisa. Hey, I made Starfield not suck as much. Give me an award. It's like, no. Why would I give you an yes. award for making Starfield suck 10% less? Did you did you make a game? Did you make a world? Did you make an IP? No. Then get the out. <laughs> And I feel like that might feel 
it might seem like I have a perspective of like game dev good, mods bad, but I don't. I think mods are fantastic and I think fan work is amazing, but it is derivative work that you don't own. And it's, it's, it's in that really, really weird area where I think it deserves its own award show. It should not be celebrated the same way as, say, Wukong or Genshin Impact or like any other game that's come in. Baldur's Gate 3, like all those games should be celebrated for innovations in terms of technical design or storytelling. Mods just fix or add stuff. They're band-aids. They're, they're, they're small DLCs. It's the best way to, to say it, right? They're small DLCs. Modders totally deserve to be given a nod at these award shows. Sure, they don't own the IP or make anything from scratch, but they make amazing pieces of art for no charge to the end user. Modders are the one major niche in gaming fandoms. That's why Skyrim has legs to this day. Because then how do you separate it? How do you, how do you distinguish when somebody takes, like, say, for example, Morrowind and they shove it in Skyrim? So they took an old game and they shoved it in a new engine. They're not really, there is work involved in that. Not actually creating something is the defining factor. I don't know, it, it's it's a really weird spot. I really feel like there should be an award show and I, I feel like that we should celebrate. Mods have propped up Skyrim and propped up GTA for a very long time that has effectively made them forever games, right? That overhaul that like changes Skyrim completely into like effectively looking like a next gen game that should be celebrated i would be fully okay with it being a separate game show if it made financial sense they would do it but i guarantee you it doesn't for like the game awards perspective because i can talk from experience of how much it costs to get a trailer in that i don't think that they would i don't think that they would do it because they don't care because in the end of the day fallout london is not going to pay <laughs> 10 to 100k to be for a minute of that show and i think the sad part is is that like all of this comes back down to money you know that's why all of these people are there you know from npr to the atlantic to fucking rolling stones la time they're all there because of money see i think that would actually be really cool if like say thunderstore nexus and curse got together and had their own award show i think that would be cool Anyway, let's keep going in this article because I'm, I'm curious, like the deranged syndrome that they have that they're like, yo, we made quality of life fixes. Give me an award because I'm just <laughs> honestly, if mods are fixing your game instead of adding content to it, there's something there's something wrong with your game. Oh, 100 percent. I don't think we're arguing that devs release games in poor states. The only time a modder should get an award is a hyper rare moment that mods are so good that it spawns its own game. Yeah, because it spawned its own game. I mean, TF2 is a mod. <laughs> kind of strikes a mod, you know, they made their own games. All right, fan made work, which modding falls into, used to have an award category at the game show called Best Fan Creation. This accolade ran from 2014 to 2016. Why does it no longer exist? Polygon reached out to the Game Awards creator host, uh, Jeff Keeley, and has yet to hear back from him. But here's what we know. Keeley ran into some trouble with the final year of the award ran. But I think this is an aspect that we didn't really talk about. It's like, yeah, like, what happens when... For example, Capcom, Capcom hates oh. mods. What happens if the Game Awards highlights a mod for Street Fighter that Capcom f hates? Well, now you start getting into political battles and saying, oh, you know what? Capcom's gonna not invest and not gonna run trailers because you're celebrating a mod that they don't agree with. Like they literally said they're immoral. They go against the game designer's original creation. Like they, they value their too much where rockstar says hey you know what mod the fuck out of it and keep the game alive and we sell more copies it's a win-win but yeah i can see i can see running into like legal trouble celebrating mods when say the ip holder doesn't agree with it which probably had a major factor in why they just said you know what this is not worth it in a nutshell don't mod japanese studio games i mean you're not wrong actually you're really not wrong I think that part of the problem is that some companies are way too protective of their IPs. I feel like though, you have every right. Whether or not we agree with it, a company needs to protect their IP. Do I agree with Nintendo's stance on patent infringement and, or not, you know, patent trolling? No, but they have every right to do so. The company is beholden to itself. It's not beholden to anyone else. So they're to make money. So in 2016, ah. Keeley announced the nominations for the best fan creation. Uh, that includes two parties that use Nintendo's IP, a Metroid fan project called a AM2R and a Pokemon Uranium. Oh man, that definitely probably didn't go over well. Initially, fans celebrate the inclusion of these ambitious fan run projects. However, in the end, Keeley cut both nominations from the final show without giving any comment. Yeah, because Nintendo probably put their massive fucking cock in them. <laughs> like, 
So it's interesting that this article like talks about the repercussions of celebrating fan created stuff like Pokemon Uranium, understanding that there is IP protection laws and it's on the creator to enforce those. It's not on the government or anybody else to enforce those. So yeah, why wouldn't Nintendo be like, no, I don't want you to represent Pokemon in this way. And now you're bringing it to a bigger audience and celebrating it. Yeah, I don't agree with that. So it's exactly the same thing we're talking about of IP holder doesn't agree with what the mod is doing, yet it's a fan favorite. If there was a mod award show, it would probably have to not have any sponsors from a lot of these major IPs because a lot of these IPs would be like, nah, I don't want to do it. Other than like maybe Rockstar, you know? Polygon reached out to Nintendo for comment and we'll update the story when we hear it back. Nintendo's not going to come back on that. They're no, 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 no. The idea that Nintendo intimidated Keeley out of the celebration of fan creation is entirely out of the question. If a now Japanese developer or publisher cultivated a reputation of being extremely litigious when it comes to fan-made projects. No, they're <laughs> But looking back, the idea that the leadership at Nintendo would let an award show platform uh, fan work does seem almost laughable. Okay, so is this whole article just a click? I, it feels like a clickbait to me. I feel like I'm getting debated right now. But now we're left in the current unfortunate circumstances. The Game Awards now excludes all the stellar and completely legal work that's happening in the larger game modding scene. I'm going to say this in the nicest way possible. This is the same as streaming. None of it is actually legal. You don't own the rights. They could shut you down tomorrow, but it benefits them. Streaming benefits them. Modding benefits them. So they don't shut you down. But today we have to make do with the nebulous category of best community support. Are you f kidding me? And he's, they're gonna f on best community support and they'd be like, no, I want the mods. Which appears to focus on the community management of the teams rather than the fan communities themselves. Because it's celebrating the game devs. What do you mean? This is not about the fans. Typical gaming journalist, no. But then they kind of like wrap it back in and say, I do, there are plenty of developers and publishers that do support modding, but that software doesn't just approve of using mods and games, but even uh, attempted to monetize modder, modder's work with the Creation Club, which failed horribly. The article proves my point that while the TGA is a trash pile, the gamers and fans are equally as bad and shit on the devs even worse. Yeah, no, I'd agree. It, it started out interesting and then just got more and more delusional as we keep going down. <laughs> I just, honestly, I feel, I feel like I'm actually getting stupider. Uh, okay, let's get through this. Let's get through this. Okay, modding often plays such a central role in the legacy of Bethesda games that is a running joke within the community that developers may release rougher games with understanding that the modders will go and fix all the main problems. So is he trying to make a point that they deserve a seat at the table, right? Like, it's just a weird statement. Bethesda isn't alone in supporting a mod case in Bob's Gate 3, the coveted Game of the Year award in 2023. The team at Larian Studios updated the game so it's easy to edit and added new content as possible. Okay, so you have... I'm not sure what his point is, to be honest. I'm really not sure. I'm, I'm really not sure because he's like jumping around so many different places of like, oh, it should have an award show. Oh, but then there's IP infringement issues. Oh, and then there's all these game companies that do support modding or they try to monetize the mods. And it's like, okay, you're giving understanding and frame of reference of what's happening in the industry, but you're not telling me why modders deserve an award show. Okay, are we actually getting to like real understanding here? While it might be difficult to navigate which kinds of modding work are and aren't okay to recognize on a national platform, I think it'll only get harder for Keeley to ignore the fan-made projects. No, it'll be very easy. <laughs> Dude, this person lives in a <laughs> dream world. That they think that Keeley, it will be harder for Keeley to ignore fan-made parts of game development. It'll be very easy. It's because it doesn't pay. There's no money to be had. It's really easy to ignore things that don't make you money. And that might sound really pessimistic, but goddamn, that's how the world works. This this writer is living in like an ideological world where money doesn't matter and that they're I mean I have ad blocker on, but you know, they're they're like how do they even pay for their articles? It's ads. To me, these kind of efforts genuinely encapsulate some of the best and the brightest work happening in games, something that Keely seems to be all about. So while I understand while an award category like best legally sanctioned fan-made creation might be a bit wordy, it would definitely be worth to give those creators recognition they deserve. Read the comments. Oh no. Okay, I've seen gaming sites report on mods that have been fined for years, only for it to immediately get cease and desist the day after the reporting. Modding is for sure important, and modders do deserve recognition, but most of it just gets allowed to exist because companies don't feel it necessary to pay attention to it. 
the more legitimized it's treated, the more they're going to pay attention. And that's usually bad. We already have companies like Capcom trying to regulate what mods exist. It's like everything we just said. Aside from that, fan work always builds on what's already existing. When it doesn't, we call those indie games. <laughs> I love this comment. And if someone is building their work within a game other devs worked on, it started to feel a bit weird when an award recognition gets involved. Does the award just go to the modders or the devs who made all the models and scripting and the programming and the art assets and the music and the textures they used? What about all the other modders whose work was necessary? If you nominate a Skyrim mod, it better include a nomination for the script extender and every other required mod it builds off of. And half the time, other mod work is just incorporating so you have to interview everyone and make sure they didn't put in a door texture somewhere someone else made. It just gets messy. Frankly, probably the best comment and synopsizes everything that is an issue with trying to celebrate modding. I feel like that, that tidied that up very nicely. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the chat. Make sure to say hi to YouTube. We record these live on Twitch. Hopefully you guys enjoy whether or not you agree or disagree about modding. Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. And uh, I'll see you later. All right. Bye bye.